So if you're pretty good in math, you should be able to solve this problem very quickly. Matter of fact, it's faster to solve this problem by hand rather than using a calculator. So let's take a look at the question. We have 4 to the 4th minus 4 cubed divided by 4 cubed. All right, now we do have a multiple choice question here. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is 255. B is 1 over 64, C is 3, and D is 4 to the 4th power. Now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help in math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, uh, you should be able to solve this problem very quickly. Matter of fact, in my opinion, you should be able to solve it faster than taking the time to plug these numbers into your calculator. So let's take a look at the answer. The correct uh, solution here. And by the way, this might shock some of you, but the correct answer is C, which is 3. So if you answer with uh, D or maybe A, well, we need to talk about a few things here. But uh, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, I oh, missed you to math, man, where did I go wrong? Well, I'm going to show you here in just one second. But uh, if you made this error, well, you're not alone. And the error that I'm talking about is maybe cross-canceling these uh, two powers right here. So if you saw this 4 to the 3rd, and you saw this 4 to the 3rd, and you're like, this looks pretty good. I can cross-cancel these, and this is my answer. Well, that is a very common error. So let's see how to solve this problem right now. So before I show you how to solve this problem, let's talk about a few common errors. And as I indicated in the beginning of this video, uh, these two things right here, this 4 to the 3rd and this 4 to the 3rd, a lot of people looked at that and they're like, boy, our eyes just kind of draw us to this. And it's very tempting to want to cross-cancel these two powers. So if you were allowed to do this, what's left over is 4 to the 4th. And that is actually an option in our multiple choice question. So that, that looks pretty good. And you got to be very careful with math multiple choice questions because uh, many of the answers are designed to try to trick you, right? So basically, they're the results of making common errors. So just because you see your answer as a choice, any multiple choice uh, question doesn't mean that, yes, indeed, you have the right answer. So be very careful there for those of you that still have to take math exams. But uh, why is this not right? Well, let's just kind of replace these numbers here with other numbers. So 4 to the 4th, maybe, maybe we'll call this 8. So this would be maybe 8 minus 6. So right here where 4 to the 3rd is in the numerator, we'll put a 6. So down here in the denominator, we'll also, ha we'll also have a 6. So we'll have like maybe 8 minus 6 over 6 as an equivalent problem. Okay, so what's the answer to this problem? Well, 8 minus 6 in the numerator is 2. So that's going to be 2 over 6. And, of course, we can reduce that fraction down to 1 third. But if you were allowed to cross cancel, i.e. this being the answer, well, it would work over here as well, right? So we can go like this and this, and then 8 would be our answer. So you can see that 8 minus 6 over 6, the answer is not 8. It's 1 third. So anytime you're not sure about something in math, oftentimes it's a good idea to uh, replace your problem with easy, simple numbers. Try to look for easier examples to see if what you're doing is actually allowed in math. Now, another thing here is a lot of people don't know how to use their calculator to evaluate this uh, power expression. So how do you take a power in your calculator, something like 4 to the 4th? Well, there's basically two buttons. There could be like another button, but these are the two most common. So you need to look for this button. That's called a caret. It's an upside down V or something like a Y to the X button. Now, these buttons here gives us... Uh, the ability to type in an exponent. So if you want 4 to the 4th, you would go 4 on your calculator, and then you would hit one of these buttons right here, 
And uh, probably the most common is this right here, especially with more advanced calculators, this caret button. So four, this upside down V, and then four. That will give you four to the fourth power, and then you hit enter. But to type this in properly, you got to be very clear that your numerator is a uh, group. Okay, it's a difference. So you, although there are no parentheses here, you want to type in parentheses. So you would type in parentheses, and then you would go ahead and plug this in properly into your calculator, minus four to the third parentheses divided by this, and you will get the right answer, which of course is uh, C. But as I uh, told you in the beginning of this video, it probably takes longer to type all this stuff into your calculator than actually doing the math, which of course I'm going to explain in just one second. Now, another uh, kind of common error here is that maybe some of you said, well, I got a four here and a three here, and these are the same. So maybe I subtract these exponents. So now I have like four to the first, or maybe four, and that's over four uh, to the third power. So maybe that's like maybe one over 64. And then this one right here, 255, is a very interesting error as well. Okay, so maybe someone said, well, I can take this and divide that into four to the third, that's one. So now I have four to the fourth, which is actually four times four times four times four. And the answer there is 256 minus one. Well, that's 255. So that looks pretty good. Unfortunately, that's wrong. So again, any good math teacher is going to come up with nice little tricky multiple choice options to try to uh, fool you in picking the wrong answer. Of course, the correct answer here is C, and you would get that if you type this in right into your calculator. But uh, let's talk about how to easily solve this without using your calculator. And the key here is going to be factoring. So we're gonna focus in on the numerator here, we have four to the fourth minus four cubed. If we can factor out the greatest common factor, the GCF, and write this in a different way, this problem becomes very, very easy. So let's talk about that right now. So the greatest common factor, this is a big topic in math. So four to the fourth means what? It means four times four times four times four. Four to the third power means four times four times four. So a factor, okay, for example, if I have 10, what is a factor? Well, factors are numbers such that when you multiply them together, you get back to this number here. So factors of 10 would be like two and five. And of course, one is always a factor of any number. So what is the greatest common factor? Well, four to the third has this factor, four times four times four, we can multiply that by one. And then four to the fourth has this factor, four times four times four times four. But we can multiply this all together and get this number. So these two here are actually a uh, the greatest common factor, right? So let me give you an easier example here. So if I had like eight plus two, okay? So eight plus two, what is the greatest common factor of eight and two? Well, we could break down eight as four times two, and then of course we could break down two as two times one. So the greatest common factor is two. So we can factor out a two, and in this simple example, it will look like this, two times four plus one. Okay, so two times four plus one is what? Well, two times four is eight, plus two times this one right here is two. Or four plus one is five, five times two is 10, or a plus two is 10. So hopefully you're familiar with factoring, but uh, if you understand the greatest common factor and what I'm doing here, you're gonna see how easy it is to get the answer. So I hope you're learning something from this video. And if that's the case, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. This really does help me out on YouTube. Now, if you need additional help in math, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and get back to the problem. Okay, so now that we know that four times four times four, or four cubed, is the greatest common factor between uh, these two powers right here, four to the fourth minus four to the third power, we can factor out the greatest common factor in this expression. 
So again, this is very much like our example uh, a plus two that I just showed you. So we can factor out a two, so that's gonna be two times four plus one. So to multiply this two back in, you're using the distributive property. So we're talking about basic math concepts here, but if you know how to factor, again, you, you'll be able to uh, solve this problem super fast. Okay, so we're gonna factor out the greatest common factor. Again, that's four to the third power, and here it is. So this is gonna be equal to four to the third power times four minus one. So if you look at this four to the fourth, that's four times four times four times four. So this is the greatest common factor. What's left is a four. So over here, four to, uh, to the third power, we have four times four times four. This is the greatest common factor, but one is always a factor. So we have a one here. So that is basically what remains in our parentheses. So four to the third times parentheses four minus one and parentheses is basically this expression uh, factored with the greatest common factor. Now you can always check uh, your work here by using the distributive property. So four to, the third, four to the third power times four is what? Well, that's four to the first. And if you understand how to multiply po uh, powers, if the bases are the same, and that's these bottom numbers here, all you have to do is add the exponents. But uh, we could just kind of use common sense here because four to the third is what? Well, that's four times four times four. If we multiply it by another four, we're gonna get back to four to the fourth. So four to the third times one is simply four to the third power. Of course, we get back to this expression. So here, my work is getting a little bit uh, crowded here, but I just want to make sure that you understand this. Now, if you're not quite getting what I'm talking about, you want to review factoring. You gotta be able to understand factoring and the distributive property. Okay, so now that we know how to factor the numerator into this expression right here, this is going to be super easy to solve. So let's see the final answer. Okay, so again, we're looking at this uh, numerator, four to the fourth minus four to the third power. We're gonna factor out the GCF or the greatest common factor. So we can write this as four to the third times four minus one uh, in parentheses. But remember, I have a four to the third power right here. Now this is four to the third times four minus one. Okay, so these two things right here, this and this number are factors, right? Now, of course, four minus one is three. We can do that math. But the main idea here is that you can simply cross cancel these four to the third uh, powers right here, okay, because these are like factors. So our answer is what remains. And of course, that is four minus one or three. If you need additional help in basic math, check out these two courses right here. So the first is my Math Foundations course. This is a, a quick review of basic math. Now, if you want to review uh, basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'm going to leave uh, links to both of these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.